Hello, you're listening to an interview with CRTV's John Miller from episode 25 of the Catholic Vote Radio Hour. You can like and subscribe to the Catholic Vote Radio Hour on YouTube, iTunes, and Google Play, and follow us at Catholic Vote on Facebook and Twitter. I'm your host, Stephen Harriet. And now I'm joined once again by John Miller, who's the host of the excellent White House Brief with CRTV. First of all, thank you very much for joining us again, John. Good to be with you, Stephen. How are you doing? Pretty good. I'm pretty ecstatic because my mind was blown this week by your segment on Wall. Oh, thank you. So what we're talking about is the headlines. The headlines will tell you Trump just went to California and he's looking at prototypes of the southern border wall. So finally, we're looking at the possibility of building a southern border wall between America and Mexico. And what blew my mind was that you simply said, hey, you know what? Actually, it's not, you shouldn't be afraid to say it. When you build walls, people can't get past them as easily as if there were no wall there, which is pretty, (laughs) I don't know why I never thought of it. (laughs) Go for it. It's funny because, uh, you know, you think they, they put the onus on us and we're always told, well, show us an example of how the wall would work. Give me an example of where the wall doesn't work. You know what? I think, Stephen, I, I honestly think that they know that the wall would be effective, that, that it would work. It's kind of like those sleazy vendors who lie to you and say that their credit card machine isn't working because they want you to pay cash. And you know that it's going to work. So you're like, really? Because I think if I tried to use it, it might work. And they're like, no, 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 no. It's definitely broken. The thing works just mm-hmm. fine. They know it, and that's why they don't want you to use it, because I honestly think that's what the wall is for liberals, because you cannot tell me that walls, A, don't work, and B, if they're so ineffective, why would they be so opposed to this thing? I mean, it's not because of spending. We know that they don't care about that. So if it's simply because it wouldn't be effective, do you think, Stephen, that the opposition would be this fierce, that they're willing to sell the dreamer down the river to oppose something that they're saying wouldn't work? I don't buy it. I don't think that they're telling the truth. I think that they oppose this wall because they know that it would work. Uh, I move in a lot of different circles, including some fairly sophisticated kind of uh, left-leaning circles and also in libertarian circles. When I bring up the idea of a wall, people roll their eyes and they just kind of say, you're not serious, are you, Stephen? And I and I kind of have gotten into the habit. I admit I've gotten into the habit of I don't bring up the wall. Basically, what you did is you went through and actually quoted people who have worked in border security scenarios where they added a barrier and it made a difference. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's 100 percent right. And, you know, I said, show me an example where it doesn't work. They're not going to show you San Diego because in 1996, again, in 2006, I think it is, they built double fenced border barriers in San Diego. Crossings went down, I think. From it was a half a million before they built the wall to 68,000, which is down by about 87%. And you saw something very similar happen in Yuma, Arizona. And then you also, we can go across the globe over to Israel. The terrorist attacks, attacks perpetrated by Arab terrorists, declined over 90%. So there is evidence, and we don't have to quote statistics from San Diego and statistics from Israel. The idea, as you said, that basic barriers should work is not novel. I mean, that's been at the basis of Western civilization. The idea of a wall to protect your city state or to protect your country is a really basic idea. And now all of a sudden, even in, you know, circles on the right is considered very radical, very extreme, and very unrealistic. It's not even considered extreme or radical or or unrealistic. The the primary thing is that it's just sort of considered, I mean, people make a noise that's sort of like, (laughs) well, (laughs) Well, you think? I mean, I mean, I feel stupid bringing it up, and then I realized, right. like after I watched your segment, I was like, "Wait a minute, why is this stupid? Why am I supposed to feel stupid? It's a thing that gets in the way when people are trying to get across the border." Uh, and and you know what I'm the saying? idea there, like you know, the wall wouldn't stop anything. But they, they're going to cross. What is a ten foot wall going to do? It's like, uh, I think a ten foot wall would actually stop them from crossing the border because it's ten feet, and they're not ten feet, so they can't step over it. And here's another thing, Stephen, because I understand the argument, it's $12 billion, and that's a very modest estimate for the cost of the wall. And I'm very sympathetic to spending arguments. However, A, as I said in my video, there are ways to make Mexico pay for the wall that are actually realistic and that are actually not just, you know, they're not going to write us a check and say, here you go. But there are remittances we can squeeze Mexico. We have immense leverage over that country. Illegal immigrants in America, they send cash, they're called remittances, they send them to their relatives in Mexico, they basically serve as welfare. If we put a limit on who can send remittances and say you have to be a legal citizen, those remittances get cut off. And so if we say you cannot actually end up sending that money to your relative in Mexico, that's going to mean big trouble for Mexico. And they're going to have their essentially welfare cut off. So if you say we're going to squeeze that, we're going to cut that off, you might have a deal. So 
A, that's how Mexico could pay for it. There's another uh, concept that Trump brought up, which would be through NAFTA. So there are a few ways Mexico could pay for it. But if Mexico doesn't pay for it, Stephen, the wall would essentially pay for itself in terms of the money that we're saving from paying for having these illegal aliens in the country. And the Center for Immigration Studies did an interesting report that said that the cost it takes for one illegal alien for their lifetime, that's around seventy-five thousand dollars and that's a modest estimate because that doesn't take into account all of the children who also cost money so seventy five thousand dollars that's their taxes paid minus the services they use so if the border wall only keeps out nine to twelve percent of those illegal aliens the wall over 10 years essentially ends up paying for itself so if mexico doesn't pay for it you also have the fact that the wall in and of itself will pay for itself within 10 years Hmm. Another thing here is that I like to think of things from the perspective of sort of being humane. You know, sure. Politics should should serve individuals who might be in danger. No, Stephen, you're an evil right winger. You want a wall to <laughs> out the people. <laughs> right, right. Well, I mean, the wall thing is seeming to me is having less and less to do with xenophobia and racism and bigotry. Because I keep thinking to myself, I mean, what we're talking about on the border right now is a problem that has been festering for a very long time. And the problem is that around the border, what has grown up is an incredibly violent criminal world where people are being abused en masse. And so a big thing here is what can we do to put a wrench in this horrible world where people are being used and abused all the time and killed? People smugglers, for instance, screw people over and, you know, end up killing people on the on the on the border. Screw people screw people over. That's putting it so mildly, Stephen. I mean, right. If you look at the pictures and you look at what is happening on the borders and you look at the people who are hurt by illegal immigration and the drug trade and the cartels, I mean, I can't even describe the things, but you see you see heads impaled on spikes. The things that happen because of an open border down there is just unconscionable. And you want to make a humanitarian exactly. you want to make a humanitarian argument here. The humanitarian argument should be to stop the horrific actions that are happening on the border by illegal immigrants. I mean, I, it, it's, it's unconscionable to me the fact that you would want to allow this stuff to continue under the name of being kind and compassionate and caring. And yet the people who want to stop that, the people who are in favor of policies and actions that would actually prevent that kind of immense crime from happening are somehow painted as the villains here. Well, and the other thing is that the important thing to bring up is it's not just horrible crimes being done by illegal immigrants. It's being done to them. Yeah. I mean, these, this, it's like a war zone and we are just we are presiding over it. And the most open borders people are the people that are basically in favor of a horrific mass of human rights violations. And they're saying, thumbs up. We like it that way. Don't change anything. And, and I'll tell you another thing. I have more respect for the there's a libertarian crowd out there who are enthusiastically in favor of open borders. And um, they're honest about it. And I have more respect for them who say, yeah, we want open borders and we want this kind of, you know, open society because the left, they keep on saying that they want to protect the border and they want to enforce the border. And it's very confusing for people who are trying to have an honest debate here because you're saying, they're saying, yeah, we're in favor of of enforcing the border and security measures. And then when you put in front of them the most common sense measures to actually enforce border security, they say that they're against it. And, and and so, you know, you have to ask what their actual motives are. And obviously, I think you and I both know why they don't actually want to enforce the border here. Well, that's for the next interview. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, John. Again, this is a great little segment. It was in the White House brief. Always watch White House brief. It's always worth a watch. But this, this week particularly, I loved how you got into Trump looking at the prototype walls, and then you actually put out there that bizarre idea that actually walls get in the way of people when they're trying to get (laughs) across the border. (laughs) So it's a good idea to put something in the way. Sometimes (laughs) the simplest ideas are the best ones. That's right. All right. Well, thank you again, John, and I look forward to having you on again soon. Thanks so much, Stephen. Talk to you later. Well, thanks for listening to this interview from episode 25 of the Catholic Vote Radio Hour. Again, you can like and subscribe to the Catholic Vote Radio Hour on YouTube, iTunes, and Google Play. And don't miss the rest of this episode coming out Friday. I'm your host, Stephen Harriet. On your mind, oh yeah, baby.